kindness. You are great, Lord Jesus, and greatly to be praised. We adore you today. We lift up our voice unto you, Lord God, and we pray in the mighty name of Jesus, God, that you take full control of the service. Thank you, God, for the worship. Thank you, God, for all the testimony we have heard so far. Now, Lord Jesus, we want to hear a word from you, God. God, speak your word, God, that somebody will hear, God. Bless somebody through your word, God. Comfort somebody through your word. Correct somebody through your word, Lord Jesus. Heal somebody through your word, God. But show your glory to everyone through your word. In this somebody say amen. Well, I pray for uh, worship. Uh, I want to thank the praise and worship for you have been really grateful. Um, I appreciate that and I pray that God will bring you to, um, to let, let you one level to another level to another level. Amen. And, um, I love your discipline. I mean, I love the way you have gone through this. You have been an improvement every day. And I encourage you to Today I want to speak about something I spoke two or three weeks ago. It was a Bible study, but not, not everybody was there. Amen. So today I want to, 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 to speak a little bit about that. And the title of the message of today is uh, The Fervent Prayer of the Righteous. Amen. The Fervent Prayer of the Righteous. Let us take our Bible in the book of James, chapter 5. James, chapter 5, verse 16. The Bible says, Therefore, confess your sin to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed and restored. The heartfelt and persistent prayer of the righteous man can accomplish its work. Amen. The Amplified Bible completes and says, "When put into action and made into fruit by God, His dynamism can have tremendous power." So the heartfelt and persistent prayer. Of the righteous men can accomplish much. Let me read that again. Therefore, confess your sin to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed and restored. The healthiest and persistent prayer. Of the righteous man and have to see You know, I like the way I will, I try it slowly so that I can translate. I like the way God put things together. If I'm passing down. You know, God say in James 5 16. Therefore, confess your sin to one another and pray for one another so that you, you may be healed and be restored. So God, God say, oh, in another way, in order for you to be healed and to be, restored, and, and to be restored, you need to pray for one another. Prayer. Amen. Confessing sins and praying. Two things. Amen. And, uh, and I want to speak today about the fervent prayer, the fervent prayer of the righteous. Um, perhaps if before I get deep into that, we need to understand who is a righteous. Who is a righteous? Who can call himself a righteous man? You know, the fact is, as a children of God, as Christians, we sometimes uh, take things and, um, 
and bring in and summarize things. Uh, partial, they say in, the, in German, partial. Partial, partial is here. Okay. So, we like, oh, I believe in Jesus. Oh, so I'm a Christian. Hallelujah. I go to church, therefore, I'm a Christian. So, we like to globalize things. But the thing is, we need to go deep into words. You know, I remember, I think it was eight years ago, I, went, I was invited to a wedding, and I saw a man. I saw a man, you know, somebody would say, he was too gay. So he was really very feminine. And then, <laughs> we were speaking, he told me, he saw me say, hey, I recognize you somewhere. I was very surprised because I'm not here with the game either. But that is not the point. And I was thinking, ooh. And he told me, and he started to, 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 to ask me to tell to try to figure out where he knew. And there was only one thing in my mind. And this one thing in my mind was, as he was speaking, then I recognized him because he was very famous at that time in the Cameroonian media. And then I asked him the question, are you a Christian? He was very shocked about the question because all what he was representing was not Christian life. So it was shocking for me. So it was a legitimate question for me to ask, are you a Christian? So he was very shocked. He said, what the question? I'm a Christian. And then I realized, hey, you know, we sometimes take things or say things or believe things who are not real. You know, it's not because I would convince myself Daily, that I okay, I will act. Don't be offended. If not because I will convince myself every day, okay, I will get another example. If not, <laughs> that I will convince myself every day that I can speak Chinese, that at the end of the day I speak Chinese. Are you getting me? If not because I will watch myself. 10 day, 10, uh, 10 times a day, so that I, I would think that I would say, okay, I'm, I'm now what? Are you getting me? Huh? <coughs> belief, belief itself will not make the reality. I want to say, just, just, it might break some religion. But only belief, oh, I believe, will not make will not make what you believe happen, or will not make that a reality. I want to tell you, I'm bringing you someone if you listen to me. It's good to believe, it's good to wish, but that alone will not bring me thing to happen if I don't have it to my face some action. Are you getting me? So I cannot just say I'm a righteous man and then be a righteous man. Hallelujah. If I want to be a righteous, I pray to be a righteous, I believe in righteousness, then I need my action need to follow what I believe. Amen. Amen. I want to read to you, with you uh, John 15. Verse 13 to 15. Just to understand what righteous means. Righteous means. Jesus is speaking, saying, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. Ye are my friends. He was speaking to an apostle. He said, You are my friend if you if you do. Whatsoever I command you. Henceforth 
I call you not seven, for the seven knoweth not what his Lord doth, but ye have called friends, and all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. So a righteous man is a friend of Jesus. A righteous man is a man who does things whatsoever God commands him to do. A righteous man is a man who lives a life according to the Bible, according to God's principles, according to God's instruction. That is a righteous man. I'm a righteous man if I follow Jesus' commandment. The Bible says that the commandment of Jesus is not so painful. The commandment. So we, we, we used to say this, oh, grace, because we are in the grace, we don't follow any law anymore. Yes, we don't follow any law. But which law we are not following? We will always follow the law of Jesus. We will always follow the prescriptions of Jesus. So for me to be righteous, means that I need to put my nose in the Bible. I need to understand what God prescription, what God needed for me. Hallelujah. Amen. And then I need to follow. So be a righteous man is be a follower, a doer of the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So you need to understand that. That we what will make us righteous? What makes us righteous is that we, Jesus, now we become one. Amen? And I can only become one with Jesus if I obey Jesus' commandment. Why? Let me go a little bit forward. I will read, uh, we, because by, by, by being one in Jesus, make me be complete in him. Amen? We need to be complete in Jesus. Hallelujah. We need to be complete in him. If you are not complete in Jesus, then something is missing in your life. I want to let you know something today before we get into the topic. There's something I always, you know, this morning I was, God was speaking to me. And God was telling me today, he was telling me, you know, see my son. There are two types of person, of Christian, two types. He said, there's one type of the Christian who will use me. Jesus. So I will make, who, who will try to make me Jesus. their servant. Jesus. Amen? They will use me to accomplish their own will. Amen? So they, will, they are the center, but I'm not the center. They, I am the center. They are the center, and they will use everything. They will use my name very strong to accomplish or to consolidate their position. Therefore, people will follow them, not me. I was thinking, wow, God. And he said, oh, but there's also another kind of Christian or leader. They are not the center. I'm still the center. And and they will and I will use I will use them to accomplish my own will. So they will not so people are not following them. People are following me through them. There's a great difference. And I was asking God this morning, what is then the difference? Because by hearing that, even me, I can fall into one side or another side. So I want to know directly, what, what should I do? What makes that difference? He, and God told me very clearly, what makes the difference is that from the pulpit, you preach my word. You don't preach your opinion. You don't preach your feeling. You, you, preach, you preach my word because and he was telling me that he would say oh look there's one thing very simple you will never influence 
people to follow what, and what they want to follow. You can tell them to follow, but you cannot say at this time they will follow. You are not sure that they will follow. We preach, but you don't know how people follow. So yeah, then you cannot judge the purity of the church, of the, the kind of holiness in the church according to people. Are you, tell, are you understand what I'm telling you? But he told me very directly that, hey, but what come from the people that what make the church? And my church, said the Lord, he told me very clearly, my church is not corrupt. The men who preach from the pulpit may be corrupt, but my church is not corrupt. As far as you preach what I tell you to preach, then the church is not corrupt. But if you preach, if you preach your own understanding, then corruption gets in. Hallelujah. So I want to tell you today, we need to make sure that we are in the in the we are good servants. And I was thinking about that. I was saying, look, how can I apply that in my own life? But again, I know when something is not wrong, or when something is wrong. I know when something is wrong. I know when something is good. But the problem is, sometimes I, use, I, I, I choose to believe that what is wrong is not true. That's true. Mm. By justifying what I'm doing wrong. Yes. You can find 10,000 excuses on what you are doing wrong. That would not make it right in the eyes of the Lord. So, the first step into righteousness, brother and sister, is honest. I need to be honest. I need to be honest with myself. I need to know to be honest to others. For example, honesty. I don't know everything. So there's something, certain thing I don't know. Honesty means that sometimes when I don't know. I say, I don't know. Amen. Hallelujah. The second step into honesty is when I, when something is wrong. Even if I do it, I need to recognize that it's wrong. I need to take a step against that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So people. Who, who always try to, ju to justify what they're doing. You know, I used to tell people that there's certain things you don't need to justify. I don't need to justify a stupidity. If, if I do a stupid act, I cannot just, I, I cannot justify stupidity. I did that because, you know, that is not my if something is wrong, let it be wrong. Amen? And if I, if I do things which are wrong, I need to pray God to give me enough strength to get rid of that. That what makes us righteous. Can somebody say amen? amen? And then the Bible says, so before I start to ask, to say, okay, I'm, the Bible says, that the prayer of the righteous available much. That's what I was saying in James 5. So before I, I start to say, oh God, you need to say in your word that the fervent prayer of the righteous available much, I need to understand which side I am, if I'm in the righteous way, or unrighteousness. Hallelujah. Another step into righteousness is brother and sister. We need to love the sin. You know, the thing is, People, we, in this current world, we don't love the truth enough. Hallelujah. Amen? We don't love the truth. But we need to love the truth. As 
Be a Christian even if you love the truth. If you are a real Christian, you need to love the truth. Why do you need to love the truth? Because the Bible says that you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. So if you are a child of God, say that means that you are permanently in freedom or you are searching permanently in freedom. So you cannot be or uh, uh, intend to, 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 to walk into freedom if you don't know the truth. And you will know the truth if you love it. If you hate something or if you hate somebody, how can you even try, if I hate somebody, I would not even like to have contact with the person, so I would not it never give me a chance to know the person, right? Yes. So if you if you hate the truth, if you don't love the truth, you will not even have the opportunity to know the truth. But the Bible teach me that I need to know that truth, and because I want to be free, brother, I want to be free from sin. I want to free to be free from death. I want to be free. I want to be free. But the only way for me to be free, brother and sister, is to love the truth. Hallelujah. So if you love the truth, then you will not be afraid to confront the truth with your own character. You, can, you will not be afraid to take your character, to take your action, and to bring that with the truth of God and say, oh, is that matching or not matching? Hallelujah. And it's because you love the truth. It's because you can match the truth with the word, with the, the, the word of God, with your character. Then you can go through repentance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the thing is this. If you love the truth, Then there's something God will remove inside of you. God will remove shame. You know, many people lie or deny the truth because of shame. That's true. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And shame go with fear. Hallelujah. So if you don't love the truth, then the love of God cannot be applied to you. You need to love the truth. So that the love of God will be fulfilled, fulfilled, fully applying you. Because don't understand me wrong. The love of God is available for everybody, but the love of God is not applied to anybody. Why? Because in order for the love of God to apply to you, you need to receive it. Are you getting me? If you don't, if I have the perfect gift in this world, if I say, oh, I have. One million dollar in this envelope, and it's for you. He will not profit you anything if I always tell you I have one million dollar for you in this envelope. I have one million dollar for you in this envelope. I have one million dollar for you. One day, in order for this one million to be a blessing to you, you need to take the envelope. You need to receive the envelope, and you need to open it. So we need to be careful. I need to. I, I like to work in, in righteousness. And let me tell you something. I was. I was. Uh, God was also uh, dealing with me this morning. In this, He was telling me, "Look, we like. We want to be perfect. We want to be like Jesus. But the fact is, we are not like Him. We are not Him. We are not perfect." So as we are living in a corruptible body, so that means that we are open. We are open to sometimes do mistakes. So I cannot be ashamed for the mistake I made. Instead of I'm, I'm happy for the blood who was, who, who was shared to cover all that mistake because the Bible says that where Sin abound, what? Love. love. God, love, raised. Love come with much abundance. I'm trying to tell to somebody today. I'm not really giving you a license to sin. But I'm, I'm telling you, 
that in your work with the Lord, you will always make this prayer. God, forgive my, my sins as I forgive the others. So if you are not able to make that prayer, if you are so perfect, you will never make the prayer, God, forgive me my sins. Because the Bible teaches us that everything what is out of without conviction is a, a sin. By saying, God, forgive me. Oh God, I'm, a, I'm, a, I, I'm not a sinner. I've never. I, 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 then you are. You, the what you are doing, what you are saying is without conviction because you know how many times you fall. But I want to tell somebody: we have the cross. We cannot please ourselves into mistakes. We need to stand up. The Bible says, seven times the righteous. Understand always, seven times the righteous fall. And seven times the righteous fell uh, raised up. So the problem is this. If you are a righteous man, the love of God will always bring you out of trouble. Amen. Hallelujah. Why? Again, because you will always go to repentance, true repentance. Not the repentance of the lips. Hallelujah. Because there are people that repent, but they didn't even believe on what they repent on. Oh, God, forgive me my sins. But what? You know, I remember years ago, I had an issue with somebody. I will not name the name. And then we, we come in. He, the person called me and said, oh, let us meet. We have even uh, uh, witnesses. At the Bible. You know, there are some, some coward people. They really know the, the Bible. You know, the devil, you, do you know that the devil knows the Bible? And I know, I believe that the, the devil knows the Bible almost better than most of people in this room. That's why the, the devil brings us to fall often. Because he knows the Bible more than us. And that's why that we need to change. Hallelujah. When the devil tempted Jesus at the cross, Jesus succeeded. Why? Because he knew the world better than the devil. Huh? He knew the world better than the devil. I mean, he was wild than the devil. Amen. So, we need to be careful. One situation. And I come to my example. You know, I, I, I had a problem with somebody years ago. And he called the Bible, very good verse. The Bible said that, oh, if you have trouble, you cannot, you, you tell your brother, if you cannot come along, then you call for a witness. Take a brother and you go to him. He said, Okay, I decided to take a brother. So, not only a brother, I, will, I decided to bring more people so that we will settle, settle the problem one for all. I was so naive. I said, No problem, no problem. Let's go to the, let us go and settle the situation. And we came to the, to the meeting. And the person told me, No matter what I did to you, forgive me, my forgive me. And let's continue. Let's continue. Then I understood that I went, I went into a trial. And I asked myself, I asked the person, and that was the problem. What is the problem? I asked them, but again, what is the purpose? Why are you, why, why are you asking for forgiveness? What, what did you do wrong? Whatever I. If I do, if I do something, if so, what do you do? What is the matter? You understand what I'm trying to tell you? I'm trying to tell you that hey, we cannot be wiser than God Himself. Huh? So, true repentance, if you really love God, if you really love, then you will understand what James 5 said. I'm just in the introduction. Huh? And I only take 30 minutes because you have to come into the point. Hey, if you have something, the Bible says, confess your, your sin to one another. So if I do you wrong, Sister LB, I have to come to you and say, Sister LB, forgive me because I did, I did this. I did this to you. I did that to you. I, I did, you know, you need, you need to name it by Words. Uh -huh. Because if you don't do that, 
you are thinking. Amen. Are you getting what I'm trying to tell somebody? So we need, my prayer to us is, let us be righteous. But let us be righteous according to the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So if you understand what righteous means, then you will have, then it will be easy for you to be healed and to be restored. Hallelujah. That's why there are some people, they are going through sin, and they make always the same sin. Always, always born again. Always born again. Why? Because they, don't, they, they, they choose to hide the sin. Hallelujah. You know, there's many ways of hiding sin. You can hide sins through the fact that you don't confess it. You can hide sins through the fact that you justify it. Are you telling me? You can hide sins in the matter, in the fact that you magnify it. Then there are people they sin. And when you ask them, then when you caught them in their sin, then they spiritualize that. You know, I've seen I've seen many, many kinds. But I want I try to help us to be righteous. Amen. Hallelujah. So let us be honest. Amen. Amen. So so if the prayer is is strong, if prayer can bring healing, so the next step is to know how to pray. Right? First I need to know what righteous means. And the second thing is I need to know how to pray. Amen. <laughs> Luke 11. The Bible says, And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he sees one of his disciples say unto him, Lord, teach us to pray. Also, John also as or as John also taught his disciples. You see, sometimes we are children that we don't, we don't we already know how to pray. Uh huh. Hey, you we we, we need to be taught how to pray. Sometimes people think, oh, we I already know because you come in the church, we see people say doing things, you do the same thing, and say, oh, now I know how to pray. No. You need to be taught how to pray. Amen? And the disciples, they were walking with Jesus. They said, oh, Jesus, Jesus, teach us how to pray. And he said unto them, when you pray, say, our Father, which is in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day, day by day our daily bread. You know, that is our Father. That is that prayer we, we used to pray. We, everybody knows. Who don't know our, our, our Father pray? Everybody know. You know, every you know, everybody can can say that. Our Father who is heaven, I love you, your name is very good, very good. We know it. But uh, do we understand what it means? Because one is to know, is to, to remember, or to, 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 to memorize. But another thing is to understand it. That's why it, it just it didn't stop only, Jesus didn't stop only by telling them that. Because for me, our Father, this prayer, is a complete prayer. That let me tell you that most of us didn't even pray the heart, the heart of it on the day. Amen? But Jesus will tell him something, will explain, will step in and explain. He said, He continued, and give us, uh, forgive us our sin, for we also forgive everyone that is in the bed to us. So, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That is a very complete prayer, but you will understand why it's complete. Because Jesus will not only stop there. He will explain to them, he said. And he said unto them, explaining what he just said. Which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight 
and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine, in, in his journey, is come, uh, um, a friend of mine in his journey is come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not. The door is now <coughs> shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto thee, Though, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, yet because of his opportunity, he will rise and give him as many he, as many as he needed. Verse nine says, "And I say unto you, ask, and he shall be given; seek, ye shall find; knock." And it shall be open unto you. For everyone that asks, receive, and that seeketh, findeth, and that him that knocketh, it shall be open. Let me stop there. I want to explain to you what will make your prayer strong. Jesus will explain us all. He pray, say, Father in heaven, give me my daily bread. To be honest with you, most of us here. What is the conclusion, the summary of our daily prayers? Father in heaven, give me my daily bread. Huh? That's why we pray all the time. We spend hours and hours, God give me my daily bread. God give me this. God give me that. God give me that. It's only a part of the prayer. Hallelujah. I want to tell you what Jesus put in faces. He said, a friend. He started to say, a friend. A man go to his friend. If you translate, it's just what I just told, told you from the beginning. Jesus, our friend. He said, I call you now friend. Right? So he's our friend. So if you want to go and ask to your friend, you say, okay, I go and ask. He, somebody went and knocked to the, to the door of his friend. So before you go and knock to Jesus' door, be the, the friend of Jesus. Yeah? So we we'll already call him that. And then he said, listen very carefully on the wording. He asked, he said, hey, I have another friend. I have a friend of mine. Somebody who came to visit me. Are you getting me? And I don't have anything to give him. So give me, don't give me some that I can feed him. So when he came to ask, what was the focus? Where was the focus? When he came to ask to his friend, where, where was the focus? Who was the focus? Who was the focus? He or his need or the need of someone else? Are you getting me? The problem is this. Our prayer are not sometimes answered because we are so selfish. It's all about us. It's all about me. My comfort. My my satisfaction, all about me. Are you getting what I'm telling you? And that's why sometimes hindrance our, our God to answer. Because God will say, you ask and you receive not because you ask wrong. Hallelujah. Okay, is that, does that mean that I will not ask for me? Yes, you may ask for you, but <laughs> before you ask, I, I strongly believe that this man, if he didn't have enough, at home, that's why that means God, he was in need for himself. But the thing is that in his need, he found the strength to help, to try to help his own brother. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask you something. We all have needed. Who don't have need here? 
If you ask me, oh, what God, if God just appeared before me and asked me, God, what do you want? I need, I have my list. Who don't want, who don't have a wish list here? Who don't have a wish list? What you wish to have? Okay, so I think it's good to have a wish list because God can come and ask you, what do you need? So you need to know what you need. Uh, there are people, they think that, they are so spiritual that they think that, oh God, not my will, but he, let your will be done. Yeah, there are people, they are so, they are so, they are already in heaven. Huh? You know, but when Jesus was saying, not my will, but let your will be done, it was his, his way going to heaven. <laughs> are you getting me? <laughs> but when he was not yet, when his hour was not yet come, some, but some, First, some people will come and ask him things. He will ask them, what do you want? Amen? So if, if, if you are on your way to heaven, like, okay, tomorrow you will die. So you, it, it's good for you to say, okay, not my will, but God, let your will be done. But if you think that, <laughs> that you have a project for tomorrow, so, brother, you may have a wish list. Amen? But the thing is, what is your wish list? God, my wish list number one. I want, I, 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 okay, if you're not yet finished with your school. God, I want to finish my school. I want a job. Uh, I want a wife. I want money. I want this. I want that. I want this. We have the list, right? Are you able to go in your list that you have, your wish list, your imaginary wish list that you have? And ask in any request that you ask of it to God. What what is related to somebody else, or what is a, what is related to God Himself? Very very simple. You will understand how foolish we are sometimes. Sometimes people will come and say, God, if you give me this, that would be your interest. God, if you put me out of this situation, then I will do this to you. Then they will start to make void. Hey, void is not God's interest in your wish. Void is only justification. You want to justify your future. Oh, God, if you give me this, I will give you that. He will give me this. And sometimes God gives you that, and, and you know, <laughs> to, to understand this, sometimes, have you ever went to a point where you say, God, if you give me this, I will give you that. And then when God gives you that, you are so happy that you forgot your boy. And you will remember your boy, your boy when, you, when you lost all what God gave you. And you say, oh, perhaps I, I lost it because, <laughs> because I didn't fulfill my view, my view, my boy. Very interesting, brother and sister, very interesting. I, I believe that a man, that we, we like to think about ourselves. But let us take also time to think about others. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's not all about us. Amen. We are not that so important. Yes. Hallelujah. Don't make yourself a center of something which not really exist. Amen? Mm -hmm. So don't take the Bible say don't have a high opinion of yourself. It's not about you. It's about God. So even God, even if God wants to bless you, it's for his glory. Amen. Hallelujah. When God wants to bless you, it's for his glory. You remember when we were speaking about, we always speak about tithes and everything. You know when, when, when God uh, institutionalized uh, tithes as a, as a law in the Old Testament? The first tithes he commanded the people of Israel to take for it was not to give him. It was not, oh, give me 10%. No. It was not there. He was, hey, take that, that time, go to a place where I decided to put my name in Jerusalem. 
And when you will get there, you will eat. You will eat. You eat from, from my glory, for his glory. So everything that God gave you is for his glory. Hallelujah. If God give you a new job, it's for his glory. If God give you a wife, my husband, it's for his glory. If God provides you something, it's for his glory. First, his glory. So, in anything you wish, you need to find God. If God needs to find his own interest into them. Hallelujah. Amen. And never forget this. God knows the deepest of your heart. Hallelujah. And that is what I like of God. God knows the deepest of your heart. Sometimes, listen to this. Sometimes God don't listen to what you said. God knows what your heart said. What your mouth said. It's sometimes very confusing, but what your, your, your heart say, that is the truth, because it's in the heart that comes the essence of life. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why we need to be careful. That's why I told you at the beginning, you need to love the truth. You need to link yourself to the truth. Hallelujah. So, the first thing I need to understand is, hey, I need to find God's interest in what I'm wishing. I need to find God's interest. God needs to have his own interest in that. God help me. God give me a look, 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 look. I, 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 wanted, I, I, I took that example one day. Somebody come and say, God, please give me a job. God, I, I really want a new job. God, Bless me with a job. God, I want a new job. Okay. God say, okay. Well, very good. I need to give you something to eat, okay? And God, and then you get a job 350 kilometers of your way on your way of worship. So that in another way, you find a job in a place that there will no worship. There are no churches. Uh -huh. And you run away. You say, oh, God has blessed me. God has blessed me. How can God bless you with something who will take you out of the fellowship? I never understand what you do. And then let me know. God can bless and the devil can curse. Uh -huh. God can bless and the devil can curse. Sometimes you get what you wish. Is not from God. It's not a blessing. It's a curse. And you need to recognize sometimes things will come in your life. And you say, oh, that might be a blessing. That might be a blessing. But that I've never seen somebody who went to marry a woman with tears of, 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 uh, of sadness. I've never seen it. Okay, let us see if it's a false marriage. A false marriage, right? you know, but you see that most in Africa or in Arabian country, but not in Europe. But I've never seen a very, you know, sometimes, um, almost the time when you get married, brother, you, you are married, right? Yes, you know. it, it, nobody helped you to, to choose your wife, right? You were so happy, right? Mm -hmm. yes. So the thing is, and that's the same, man, with the, with the Rana, nobody, somebody told you, with the Rana, uh, now you have to marry to start blessing if, if not, I'll kill you. Somebody so told you that. No, you thought that was the greatest day of your life. Right? Yeah. But you say, oh, that is the most greatest day. And you always see, I was, I was telling that to my wife. Hey, when you see people who are just in love or they want to get married, see their, their Instagram photo. See them in Facebook or Instagram. Oh, that is the love of my life. That is my thing. thing. That is my thing. But you know, <laughs> look, look. Very careful. Observe, brother. Observation. Observe. Observe. When the wedding, oh, Instagram. You've got a photo everywhere. 
One month after honeymoon, honeymoon, boom, snapshot. <laughs> Two months. Ah, observe, observe what I've observed. You will see, you will start seeing some of the picture coming. Huh? People are getting quiet. Huh? What happened? Reality. <laughs> That right, brother? Yeah. Huh? Reality. Then we, you know, re I like, I love the way that reality brings bring quiet, peace. <laughs> what I'm trying to tell to somebody is, you need to be careful on the choice you make, because the choice you make is your choice. If it's a good choice, a good choice, you will rejoice all your life. If it's a bad choice, you will cry all your life. And then the, the thing is, sometimes when we cry, it's got a problem. Mm -hmm. Never has a problem. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm trying to tell you? That means, that's why I always tell you, be careful. Sometimes when you ask something, God knows what you ask, and the devil understands what you're asking. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Uh huh. Uh huh. And, and the devil will like to curse, but God okay. wants to bless. And that's why you need to be careful if you really want the blessing of God. Find the trust of God in what you're doing. Bring what you are asking with the word of God in his matching. Hallelujah. Because God will not want to curse you. God cannot give you something he will bring you out of his will. God said that the, the, they say, I know very, very good in French, but I will try to translate it in English. That the blessing of God is good and suffer no regret. Amen. The blessing of God so. No. So if you ask something and you and you, uh, you ask God, you pray, you fast, and you receive something, and afterwards it's, it's very hard to swallow, that might be a, a curse. And this curse is not coming from God. Are you getting me? So we need to be careful. In everything that I ask, I need. If I, God need to find, I need to find God's goodness in this. Amen? Amen. But not only these small words, yeah? Oh, God, God give me, give me this so that, you know, God, God give me a good job. God give me a position, give me a director position so that everybody will know that I serve a great God. Preach. God make me rich that everybody can know that a Christian can also have millions. Huh? Huh? Who don't know that? Who don't know that prayer? Who have never made that prayer? God give me so that people will see. <laughs> you know, we need to be careful. We need to be careful. Amen? The Bible said, But ask, it shall be given. Seek, it shall be found. No. It shall be up for everyone that acts in sin, and that and everybody that sin find them, and everybody that not shall up. Let me tell you something clear, and I don't want to be very long. In one thing, we need to understand: what, how can I make sure? That what I'm asking to God is according to His will. The Bible says that those who are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. I need to be led by the Spirit. What I'm asking need to be inspired by the Holy Ghost. Are you getting what I'm trying to tell you? I'm trying to tell somebody. That before you even ask something to God, the first prayer you need to make God is that your will? 
God, what do you want for me in this situation? Sometimes we get into situations in life and then we already know the solution. And when we go to, uh, to God, we go to, uh, to God and uh, ask him, oh God, give me the solution and this is my solution. You already know the solution and you ask for so solution and you keep asking for solution. But the thing is that sometimes when you have problems, God knows the best, the right solution. Why don't you only bring the problem to God and ask for God the solution? Hallelujah. Are you getting me? I will take one example. Somebody's ill. Somebody's ill. I'm ill. I'm ill. I have headache. I cannot sleep. Five now. Then I go to God. I say, okay, God. Huh. God, heal me, God. Heal me, God. God, God, let this man lay his hands on me. Then I can be healed. God, let this man lay his hands on me so that I will be healed. God, I need that a man of God who needs to help to lay hands on me. And then that is your prayer. God, I know that the man of God that he, he may lay hands on me. That is the solution you are praying to God, right? You are healed, so you have headache. God, heal me for my headache. The way that God will use the canal, the vessel that God will use to heal you is open to God. Uh -huh. God can tell you, God can go, God can use a medicine, uh, a big open, <laughs> to heal you. Oh. Yes, God can use a medicine to heal you. Uh -huh. God can use the hands of a preacher to heal you. God can use another candle to heal to, 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 to heal you. Some, God can make that disappear like this. The candle is not very important. The important is that you get healed. So why don't you go and lay your hands in God and say, God heal me? There are people they are healed, they are sick. They will never go to the hospital. Why? They say, I have faith that God, you know, I there was there was somebody came came to the church. She has the person has a very a very big disease, a very serious disease, let us say. A very serious disease. And the person came to me and said, Pastor, I believe that God can heal me on that disease. I tell the person, you are not the only one we believe too. I believe that God will heal you too. And I say, okay. Since you are you, you have this disease, what are you doing? I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying. I say, okay. Do you believe that I'm a pastor? She said yes. So if I tell you whatever I tell you to do, you will do. You believe that the, that God is in you? She said yes. I said okay. Okay, very good. We will pray how? And I will pray for you. But make me a favor. Do me a favor. Tomorrow, you go to the hospital. And you bring me what the doctor said. And she said, I don't really believe that, Pastor, but I will do that because of you. I say, Yes, yes, do that because of me. My belief is enough. You remember, Sister Alfie? And then the person, she went to the hospital, and the, the, the doctor said, Okay. That is what you need to do. That is the medicament you need to take. That is what you need to take. You need to take. You need to take. And she brought it to me. I said, okay, so now I have the conviction that you have the disease. She said, yeah. I said, yes, yes, I have the conviction. Uh, okay. We, will, we are going to the next step of your deliverance. Go to the apotheker and buy all the medicine that the, the doctor told you. And take it the way he told you. And take it constant. She said, Oh, Pastor, I don't believe it, but I take it. 
I said, yes, but be aware. How we will call you every day, every time to see if you are taking that accurately. The person tried to take daily, daily. Two months, two months is that we? Two months? About two months. She came again. She said, oh, Pastor, my, my medicine are finished. I said, okay, good, good, good. You take another appointment, you go to the doctor. Okay? You do that. She went to it. She took the another appointment, she gave the doctor. The doctor, the doctor said, exam, exam, exam. And the doctor said, oh, we don't see that disease anymore. And she was so happy. The person was so happy. I'm here, I'm here. Pastor God, heal me. Pastor God, heal me. I said, yes. That is the God we serve. He used the, the doctor. He used the hands of the doctor. He used the wisdom of that doctor to help you, right? Okay. And she was so happy. The person was so happy. Hey, the thing is this, brother. We cannot put God in a box. Hallelujah. We cannot put God in a no. in a box. <laughs> so we need to learn. The second thing about prayer is perseverance. We need, you know, when you add something to God and you know that it's according to God's will, you need to be constant. Are you, are you getting me? We need to be constant. We need to be constant. You know, there are some, and that's what the devil does sometimes. Sometimes ask something to God. As God, God is putting, you know, it's like Daniel. Who, who knows the story of Daniel? Daniel asked something to God. He went to 21 day fast. Huh? We all like the, the story, the fasting story, the, the, the story of Daniel, the, 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 the fast of Daniel. Daniel went to a 21 day fast. And the Bible says that after 19 or 20 days, the, the, the angel appeared unto him and said, Daniel, before the, the first day, the day that you, you are asking, you start, God gave the God sent us to bring the solution. But the devil was fighting also, then we need to, to it, it, it was delayed a little bit. So sometimes you are asking something to God, and the devil will come and bring you discouragement. Amen. And what is the purpose of God to bring you discouragement, to make you discourage? The, the, the purpose of the devil is to, 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 to remove your belief, to, that, you, that you will not, to, that you lose your faith. Hallelujah. And when you started to lose your faith, then you get out of the will of God because God hates unbelief. Are you getting me? So sometimes when you if you are asking something strongly to God, the thing that you are, you don't you do not need to fall onto, you don't need to fall onto unbelief. Your faith needs to be strong. Somebody say amen. You need to be, you need to, to do like Anna, you need to pray until you understand the purpose. When God said, okay, it's good. When you feel that in your heart, then you feel more love. The peace, you need then to live to have that peace. Amen. Because before the moment that God answered the prayer of Anna and the reality, sometimes, are you getting what I'm trying to tell you? We need to be consistent and to keep our faith, no matter what we are asking to God. Somebody say, Amen. Hallelujah. Because the God that we serve has only one purpose. And the purpose of God is to make us happy. He's a father. God, you know, sometimes we think. We think that God, you know, we, I don't know the perception that we have of God, but I'm so naive enough for the blame to think that the perception that I have of God is the perception of a father and a son. And a son to the God. Hallelujah. And just the way I the way I God inspired me to treat my children, I believe that. God is doing more than towards me. See, 
when you even when the when the yeah, when I, I I have a testimony and I will finish with it. Somebody was explaining a testimony that he has about his children, his, 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 one of the children. He said he 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 promised one thing something to, to, to his child. And when he was he promised, he said, okay, I will give you this, you I will give you this. And the child said, okay, Papa said he would give me this. And she didn't take care of that. So she was like, oh, I'm very happy. Papa is taking care of For example, if I said to Peter, well, I, I told her that I was to Peter, Peter, when he would be 10 years old, if you have good results at school, I would bring you to his school. Right? And why I, I promised my child, my child. So she will explain to everybody, I'm going to Israel. And when I will be 10, I'm going to Israel. I'm going to Israel. I'm going to Israel. But let me tell you something. She did, does she know what it costs to go to Israel? <laughs> huh? Does she know that you need to pay a, a flight ticket? You need to get this, you need to get some preparation. She, she don't care about the preparation. She care about the promise. My dad, my dad promised me and when I will be 10, if I got two good results, I will go to Israel. So she, that's all what is her mind. But the, what the father is doing, what the father, what would be my, my, what would be my part? My part is to prepare to travel, right? She don't care how I do it. The only thing is, you know, that when she will be 10 in the holidays, Papa, I have my bag ready. Where, when are we going? Are you getting me? And that is the way God works with us. You promise, God promised you something, you know? You just do your part. By doing your part, God is doing the preparation. He don't need to involve you in any preparation he's doing. He don't, he don't need to involve you in everything. He just work things on the road. And that is what we need to understand, brother and sister. God is not a punisher. You know, people, sometimes we think that God is a punisher. God is not there to cut your head every time you do something wrong. <coughs> Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. If when the child does something wrong, you don't cut your head, your head off, how can you think that God can cut your head off if you do something wrong? Yes? From time to time, this is last. You know? I think it's not going to say that in Germany, don't say that you that you have to cheat. They go in prison. But what I'm trying to tell somebody is, is we need to be careful. This God is a good God. He's your father. He will, is, is your father, is, are you giving everything that your child asks you? No. If my daughter come and say, Daddy, I want a phone. How many times has my daughter say she wants a phone? But I know if I give her a smartphone, I will cry later on. That's why I don't give her a smartphone. If I don't give her a smartphone, that means that I hate her? No, it's out of love. There are certain things you ask to God and he will not give you right away. Why? Because he loves you. Because he wants to protect you. The same way you protect your own children. Are you getting what I'm telling you? But it's not the, a, a reason to curse God. Amen? Just, 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 just imagine, just imagine, because sometimes we just, we, we are so spiritual, but just imagine you have your own child, like my, my Katia, she asked me, Daddy, I want, I want to, I want to give, uh, Daddy, I want a smartphone. Everybody in my class has a smartphone. Daddy, I want a smartphone. And I said, Children, child, you will not get a smartphone. I will not give you the smartphone. Then she turned on me, she said, Papa, you are bad down, you are this, you are down, you are down, you are down. What would be your reaction? I don't know what would be your reaction, but I know what would be my reaction. I really know what would be my reaction. And I will not be happy. And the same. You ask God for things and you don't get it right away. You start to curse him. What God, what can be his own feeling? Amen? So sometimes, let us bring things very closely. Let, let, let us bring certain things very simple. Break it down. God is my dad. So, 
if it's my daddy, then he cares for me. Hallelujah. And yes, when you have a need, God knows that you have a need. As sometimes my daughter, I see the need, but sometimes I like her to come and tell me, Daddy, I want this, so that I may be happy. You want to go to take me as a father. So, I want to tell you something. And that will be my prayer with you this morning. God wants everybody to be happy. Mm -hmm. It's not the desire of God that we are suffering. But we have to go through suffering sometimes. But if the main desire of God is that God will be glorified mm -hmm. in everything. Mm -hmm. So I want to pray with you today. Mm -hmm. My first prayer will be that God will make us less selfish. It's not always about us. Let us let, let everything be Amen. The second thing I want us to pray about is I'm not the king of everything. I need to take care for one another. I need to take also in consideration. Well, I need to take also the other in consideration. It's not all only in me to have everything. It's always all the people to, be, to have also. So that means that I need to learn what I'm listening to this. I need, I need to learn how to rejoice for the life of my brother. The third thing I want us to pray about. God give me strength to be consistent and to persevere in my prayer so that I will not be very quick in So I want to open the altar power to somebody today. If you feel like you are asking something, God. And you will not yet understand why you are asking that. Ask God. God, I need to understand the purpose of why I'm asking you to use for that. Perhaps you are asking something to God for a so long time. And you don't get it because you are not righteous. Perhaps it's the time to say, God, make me righteous. God, make me righteous in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray, brothers and sisters. Let us pray. 